Hello folks in YouTube land, uh, my name is Dave, also known in game as Big Bad Dad. Um, you'll usually see me running around playing with guys from the Next Generation Gaming Group. And uh, today I'm doing a new video showing just the basics of the Rust Experimental Line. So let's get started, let's start. Um, let's use a community server for the fun of it. Something with low ping but some people on. Just keep going until we see people. Oh, I'm oh, oh, I see, I see one there. 46 out of 50 people in the server de Julie. France. Okay. Click join server. Join the server and let's see what happens. These screens are normal. This is what you're going to see. For some people, these take a long, long time. My system has uh, running off of a RAM drive in memory with 16 gigs of RAM. This is the first screen you're going to see when you come to a new server. It's okay. It is an alpha game. You haven't actually died, but you have to die in order to be dead so you can respawn. So this is the screen that you see for respawning. Okay. So first screen. There you go. Hit respawn. Now you got to get up and get going in this game. Click here to wake up. You're standing in the snow, there's not a lot of anything around, it's kind of miserable. If you want to have a, a lot more fun, I highly suggest getting out of the snow. But the way biomes work here is very exactly the same as Earth. Snow is to the north, hot deserts are to the south, and the grassland is in between. Pretty near everywhere you go, you're going to see houses, which means there's people around. They might be abandoned, they might not be. First thing to know, in the snow there are plenty of trees and some minerals, or reasonable minerals, but not very many animals. In the grassland, there's many animals and many trees, but not very many minerals. And in the desert, there's many animals and many minerals, but not very many trees. So if you can get on a border between one and the other, you kind of get the best of all worlds. Pretty near everybody in this game hates the snowy land. Some people like it, but most of us hate it. So the very first thing you're gonna learn how to do here is to kill yourself. So you're gonna press F1, actually, sorry, back up. Most of the time people are getting bad frames per second here. You wanna press F2, and in my case, make sure all of these are off and turn off procedural virtual texturing. Basically this will give you the best frames per second you can get. In my case right now I'm getting 114 and that dipped down to 90. And if I turn this down, oh, where we go? It doesn't really change. I'm still at 90, so it's rendering stuff it shouldn't be, but that's all about optimization. So F2. Once again brings you to this menu. Make sure everything's turned off if you're getting bad frame rates. Anything anything below 40, 50 ish, if you're well below that, turn it off and you might need to look at upgrading your computer. But for now, sometimes there's bugs that make that even worse. So press F2, get rid of it, and there you go. So now at this point we're gonna press F1 which brings up our console. Type in K-I-L-L -L and boom, that kills you. Press F1 again and hit respawn. Ta-da, yay, we're in a good spot. Okay, so click here to wake up. I hear some noise. You're gonna wanna have a headset. It doesn't have to be the best, doesn't have to be the worst, but you gotta be able to hear it and you wanna crank it up. So basically, we're naked guy. F3 will give you a third person view. You got nothing on. There you are naked in the wilderness. You wanna survive. That wolf usually means you're surrounded by radiation right now. I should be getting radiated, but I'm not. These statues are all over the place. They're good markers to help you figure out what you're doing and what's going on. So, all right, what do we got? We got grassland over there, trees over there, and water in between. Here, I'm gonna give you a good first lesson, ready? F3, this is your rock. You use your rock to beat everything up, to collect stuff, to get anything. If you wanna run, hold down Shift and W, you know, it's W-A-S-D, same as every other game. Hold down Shift to run, or Control to crouch, and be silent. Nice and silent, see? That's how there's to it. I can hear an animal somewhere. Now you can kill a weak animal with a rock. Hopefully it's a pig. If it's anything else, it'll probably kill you. Ooh, it is a pig. Yay, so we killed our first animal. So what I do, I crouch because I find it easier. Move up to it. Oh, there's a bear coming. Is that a bear or a wolf? Oh, it's a bear. If he sees us, he'll come after us. So um, hit the pig with your rock and you will gather animal fats and cloth and bone fragments. All right, so we've gathered all the bone fragments we can. Now, swimming is not a safe thing. Um, unless you're fully decked out. We don't want to go near that bear. If we see him, keep make sure you keep looking around constantly because if he gets close to us, he'll kill us. So we're going to collect our bone fragments from the piggies and we're going to try and get somewhere we can gather some tree wood. Um, we can probably find a narrow spot. We can swim across this water. When you get in the water, you're going to get what they call soaking wet or very wet. And you're going to get very cold and that will kill you. Um, and we're in the snow right now and the sun's pretty high, so that should be good. Looks like someone's got a base here. Looks like they're gonna build a platform to uh, swim from. We're gonna give this a try. I will probably die swimming, so let's do it. So don't hold down the spacebar, just 
steer in the direction of up and keep pushing, hold down shift and steer in the upward direction. The trick is to try and level off without going underwater too long. If you can get really level, you'll stay kind of at the surface longer to lower the bobbing level. There we go. If you do that, you die slower. There we go, we're doing good. This one's not bad, didn't get freezing cold. I expected to. When the sun's higher, you do better here for some reason. User joined your channel. Hey, buddy. Oh, that's pretty good. If we had a campfire, we'd throw it down here and it would dry us out and we didn't get too cold, so awesome. User joined your channel. So there's trees over there. Let's go get some trees. Hello. So at this point, I'm just crouching so it's quieter. Um, you want to have your rock out in case someone comes up. You better be used to dying. You're going to die a lot. It's okay. It's just part of the game, and then you learn to take on, get going, and do what you got to do. But run as fast as you can. Let's go get those trees. And the first thing we're going to make is a spear. So we hit the tree with our rock. As you can see on the right side, we're gathering wood. If you go, if you go to third person. It's a lot quieter, but you can sit here and look at your own ass. User Let's... joined your channel. That's my team speaking. Team speaks over you'll hear that user has joined your channel. Just ignore that. Alright, once I have gathered at least 200 wood, weapon-wise, up here in the top, stone spear. Click that. So the spear has fantastic reach. It's really good for melee, good for against people, and good against animals. And it's just a cheap, easy start. Uh, next thing you're going to want is in your tool section. You're going to want a hammer. We're going to be wanting to make a stone hatchet. So we're going to wait until we get a some stones. We're going to find some stones first. So you can see down here, stone spear. That's building. When that's done building, it'll, uh, it'll pop into your inventory. Notice here we have fabric, which means we might be able to make some clothing. Uh, what do I have? Hazmat, burlap, shoes, gloves, shoes, no boots, gloves, shirt, trousers. I'm waiting to make trousers, so I need some more cloth. I'm almost there. Once I get enough cloth, I can make trousers and cover myself up. Um, you have bone fragments. We have animal fat, which is used to make um, uh, fuel for the furnace, uh, to, to make a furnace. Bone fragments are used to make a um, bone knife, which is one of the best tools for collecting. That and a hatchet. The hatchet's a little more versatile, so I carry that 90% of the time. And uh, here we have meat, raw wolf meat, which comes off of everything. If it comes off a pig, a bear, it doesn't matter. It's all wolf meat. Um, wolf skull is useless. We just drop those wherever we're at and collect all the wood that you can. So, Here's another system, in case you haven't seen it. See, I have a 150 wood. When I put my mouse over, I won't grab it all. See that number on the left is going up and down. That's how much wood I'll grab. So if I want to take part of that wood, I can just grab it and drop it, and I get part of it. If I slide the mouse up to the very top, eventually hit the top number, grab it all, and drop it, and you get it all. That's all there's to it. So I want to move 160 to 50, I grab it all, and move it. And there's our spear. So now we have a spear. We're going to put that right there. I don't have enough for a bone knife. I still have my... Okay, so... Um, no, F3, I always hit my F2. I hear an animal, and I see some minerals. You gotta learn the animal sounds, because some animals are friendly, and some animals are deadly, and you don't want the deadly ones sneaking up on you. So you see this big rock here? These are the landscape rocks. These are normal, everyday landscape rocks. They're useless. I can beat on that all day. I'll get nothing from it. These rocks have color and lines in them. There's orange rocks, blue rocks, and white rocks. These will give you different ores and stones. You want to collect those. I need to collect up to 200 stones, I think, to make the next hatchet. stones let's check here tools stone hatchet needs oh i need 200 wood so i got 100 stones i need 200 wood 160 wood so i need some more wood there's really no point in collecting all that rock without having a better tool when you use a better tool you actually salvage more of the rock so you get more material faster oh also take the time to enjoy the sunsets and the scenery graphics aren't the best but they are nice and don't forget this is an alpha game they really are working on it it's come leaps and bounds in two weeks and it is getting better every day with a lot of community involvement in the forums. Don't be afraid to go join the forum, go in there, read through what's there, and post your own, um, if you notice bugs or problems or situations. And please feel free to make YouTube videos and post them up to help people. And a side note, ignore most of the chat. Most of the chat 
is uh, people looking to troll, trying to drag people into conversations, and the language tends to be foul, and just ignore it, and you can have a really great game. Find some good people, there's lots of them in here, and have fun playing with them. So, so now we finish collecting our wood. Now we have enough wood, we can make our stone hatchet. Okay, so while that's happening, so I use a headset and I got it cranked, cranked really loud, turned way up. So I use it kind of like a sonar so I can hear the animals walking. I can hear a deer over here somewhere. User joined your channel. Actually, I should have said something. The very first thing you want to learn, or you need to figure out how to make, is your sleeping bag. And we need 50 cloth and we have 30. Okay, so using my headset. I turn until the animal sounds in one ear. That's my left ear. That means it's probably this way. Be ready for anything. At any point, a uh, wolf could jump out. Or a bear. There it is. How's that for radar? Stabbed him right in the butt. Yeah, yeah. All right. At this point, my stone hatchet is almost ready. So I'm just going to wait for the stone hatchet. See down here on the right our stone hatchet. And that will appear right here. And then I'm going to use that to replace my rock. Really? Come on. Something lagging here. There we go. If it doesn't work, just move another piece of something in your inventory. There we go. Okay. Switch to our hatchet. Kneel down. Notice we're getting a lot more material on the right. Watch the numbers. Okay, so we got a whole bunch more stuff there that time. Back in my inventory, I get 74 now. So the most important thing I can make is a sleeping bag. As soon as our sleeping bag is working, we're gonna stuff that into a bush somewhere. Let's go find a nice big bush. And yes, I realize at some point somebody's snickering their head off right now. Okay, you don't want to find these little bushes with the space in between them. You want like four really jammed right together. That way you can hide your sleeping bag well. That's a pretty good one. It's not too bad. This one's not too bad. I'll go with this one for now. I know I'm by the water and I can get my bearings off of it, so... There, our sleeping bag's done. So we put our sleeping bag in any slot. I always use six, but throw it in your hand, and now it'll show you where you can and cannot place it. There's a lot of places you can and can't place it, so you gotta experiment. Walk around the bush. Maybe I wouldn't even be allowed to put it in this one. Nope. Not gonna happen. All right. Oh, there's a bigger one. Sometimes you get right inside them. Oh, look at that. I'm right underneath that bush, right in the middle. A sec. There's the end of it. So, try to get right in the middle of it and click. And there, we have a sleeping bag down in the middle of that bush. And it would be really hard for anybody to see that, okay? So hide your sleeping bag in there, and after I've done this, everybody will be looking for them. Hard to see, hard to find, and hard to destroy if you can't see it, right? So now, if we die, we'll come back to that bush, and that's what we know. Yeah. Talking to my dog here, Morgan. He's my face here. Hey, baby. Hey, baby girl. Hey, yeah. All right, so we have a spear hatchet. Now, here's another lesson. I'm not sure if you'll be able to see this. You should be able to. Um, you can hit Alt, which will take you out of a window mode. Hit Alt Tab, which gives you your mouse cursor back. And in my case, I use an ATI, so I bring up my ATI control. Click Desktop Management, Desktop Color, and at nighttime, see this one? Gamma. You know, call it a hack, call it whatever you want, fine. But everybody does it, or many people do. Once they know it, you will. And you just crank that up till it looks right. Then hit Tab back to your Rust, and now I can Tab back to it. And you can see the grass in the background. Watch the grass. I can actually see. It's still middle of the night, right? Here's the default. That's what it looks like for everyone else. That's what it looks like for us, right? You just click on your rust. Grab yourselves a hatchet. Now, oh yeah, where's that stone? Now we're gonna go collect some stone and wood, and we're gonna make some the basics. I'll run up here so I can get a high vantage point and see if there's more minerals around. Oh, 
got more minerals down here, huh? Lucky. Jump off the mountain. This whole time, make sure you're listening carefully for other people's footsteps. You're allowed to be paranoid. It's healthy. Until you meet people who actually do you favors and are good to you, just assume everyone wants to kill you. And don't get mad about it. That's somebody fighting with a wolf. So that means there's somebody else around. We just can't hear them or see them yet. Now that just made a ton of noise, and I think I heard somebody stepping inside. That looks like a camp down there. When people walk, you can hear it. He can hear me in the grass right now, if he's in there. And uh, it's not a good thing. You know, making noise attracts people to come kill you. The other point is that you're stealing resources, or you're using resources in the same area, so you're competing. And um, they don't want you to have the resources. So we got some stone, we're gonna go back here and ramp up some wood, and we're gonna build our very first little shelter if we don't get killed while trying to do it. Get back in here. Somebody's running after us. If you want to survive, learn to hide and run. There he comes. He has a gun. We don't want to get shot. Zig and zag. That scared me. We don't want him seeing us at our sleeping bag either. Run around rocks and stuff. Try not to move too much, but turn a little left and right. Make it not easy for him to shoot at you. That automatic fire is a Thompson, so if you can keep any distance, then he won't be able to hit you. This is a very important thing. I'm glad someone came along. So, here's my next lesson. When you jump, you can hear... If the other guy's still chasing you. User disconnected from the channel. If you listen, there's no footsteps. That means he stopped. He's not chasing us. He's over there killing a bear, actually, so... Good for him. But he has a Thompson. That means he has supplies. And that means we want to keep an eye on him. My favorite rifle is the bolt action for that type of long range. And if it was myself, I would have slowly crawled up over the hill. And then I would use the bolt action to shoot me. So just so you know, if you were me... You'd be dead. We'll get back to our default coloring. There we go. All right, now, get to our hatchet. Great lesson, run away. It's okay, keep running. If you're here and you want to learn to survive, run. Run, run, and run. I am a giant scaredy cat until I get my base established. Now he knows that we're here too, and that is a bolt action. That sound was a bolt action. That means he's hunting. He may have shot an animal. He might be shooting at us. I don't know. Let's grab some more trees and keep running. Ooh, look, a forest over there. Don't forget to use the bushes. Stay close to them. Uh, if you like, you can use F3 just to get a wider view angle. I find that's easier when you're running, but I don't want to look at my butt. So make sure you keep looking. Oh, see this dead guy up here? Mr. Meeks. Uh, you know, if they're in the open and they haven't established anything, sometimes they'll have stuff on them. He's got a little food. But he's got bone fragments just like any other animal. No offense, but I don't want his rock. I'm going to slide down the hill. Whee! But uh, he's he's got bone fragments and fat that we can use. So It's kill or be killed, eat or be eaten. I don't eat the human meat. I just, you know, morally I don't bother. And I know it's just a game, but it's also only worth one third, I believe, of the value of, uh, of wolf meat. So I keep the wolf meat. I also collect the skulls just to put in a box to scare people with later. So at this point, I'm going to stop running around because I want to sneak around. I know when I hit the street, it's going to make noise, but I'm trying to limit the amount of noise I make. Okay. Put our trees, got our rocks. Some people like to build on top of stuff. Some people like to build below things. I like to build where I can hide first. Hiding is the most important thing to me right away. And then if I'm going to build something bigger, I'll use this base to launch me to a second base. But if you just want to go nuts and build something like right on top of everything. We'll do that too. Let's try that. So our first step for building is going to be to make a piece of paper. Click a piece of paper. You can also click a low grade of fuel and make one of those because you can use that to make a furnace. And in a minute, you're going to want to make a campfire. Keep listening carefully. I can hear a bear in someone's footsteps. I think it's footsteps. It might be just a bear. All right. We got wood. We've got stones and we've got metal fragments, which we're going to put in our furnace that will help us upgrade everything the way we need it after. So the first thing you want to do is make yourself a two by two shelter or a two by one I like the room of a two by two. It just takes a little more time. You gotta be vigilant about being willing to run away and let it go. 
Now, I do like to build up high so I can see around things um, if I want to get up on top of my shelter, but in my case, I just want the shelter to hide. So I'm kind of going to look for a secluded place I can hide it. Oh, somebody shooting out that cannon. So he has a rifle and he can shoot long range. That means he could shoot us if he was up here. Um, so a very important lesson I learned a long time ago was to build your foundation as flat as possible, if you can. Like, this is a pretty flat looking rock. It's not bad, that looks more flat. It's not bad, not bad. Much better. Look at this one. That's a nice flat rock. The flatter the rock when you put your foundation down, the less space there's going to be underneath your foundation for people to crawl through. So now you click this and click building plan. And building plan is what you're going to use. That's a building plan, not just a foundation. And then for a tool, you need a hammer. I can hear that he's shooting from over there. I hate it. I hope he's shooting bears or something. Please be shooting bears, not me. I don't want your stinking bullets. That rock might be a little more slanted. Let's try over here. This looks more flat. Right here. Okay, so we got our plan. Put our plan in hand. Hit. I put it number four, so four is my magic number. So I'm going to put it down. Try to pick the highest spot, because that's where your foundation starts from. So something like there, and then you can add on to it like that, that, and that. Now that's just an idea, that's not actually there right now. So we take that out of my hand, that's where my foundation is going to go. Just like that. Now we're going to put our wooden hammer in hand. We're going to hit number five to bring it up, and hit it with your hammer. Until it forms into something. Now that took nine hits, in case you didn't count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That's the minimum to make a foundation. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Now some people will spend time upgrading that, and I will as soon as I get walls up. So I hit four. Here's how you make a wall. You get your foundation in your hand. Right click. Wall plan. Okay, this is very important. First thing I'm gonna do is right click foundation steps, and I wanna see where can I put foundational steps. If I put them there, I'm gonna be stuck in a rock as yes, I am. So I'm gonna click them right there. I can't put them there. I can't put them there. I can't put them there. I can 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 put some there. Everywhere you put a set of foundational steps stops anybody from building there. Because a really mean trick people love to do is to build a wall in front of your door. So we're just gonna put them there anyways. Keep listening carefully because I thought I heard footsteps, but maybe not. So you can see here my foundation is too high up, which is great, because that means that nobody can add on a foundation. See, they, can't, they can't place one. In order to place one, they gotta be that far away from me, which gives me room to open a door or get out. Okay, so for now, that's what I do for my foundation, and I put steps all the way around it. As soon as I can, I'm gonna upgrade that to level six. That's the safest thing. Now, number, oh, someone is beating on an animal. I'm gonna right click, which with my plan in hand, which gives me this menu, and allows me to say I wanna make a wall plan. Thank you. I'm gonna put down walls. Come on. If it sticks, just move it around so you can get it where you want it. And this is once again you're charting out a mental a mental plan. They're not actually there until you put them there, so. I really want to get these walls up so that, that guy doesn't shoot me. Oh, oh. get all the walls up and we need to put a door frame in there so somebody doesn't shoot us so we hit four to get our blueprint in hand right click pick doorway plan oh i put it in the wrong spot here's a good lesson when it's in the wrong spot just take out your hatchet and hit it oh oh remember it's actually a doorway frame so there's a hole in the middle you gotta hit the side of it there and it'll disappear if you hit it once with a hammer you'll have to hit it 30 or 40 times to get rid of it but if you don't hit it with a hammer you can just get rid of it by hitting it once 
that one went down really easy. Sometimes you got to jump around and click it and jump and click and jump because right now there's some bugs with it, but it works. So just like, like full screen here. And there we go. We have a door frame. Now, if you want a door, we go back to our number four, right click and go to wooden door and then click it. And then grab your hammer. Now this is an unlocked wooden door. Anybody can open that door and come in here and shoot you. Also remember there's hills around. Somebody could be up on a hill or they could put a ladder up there. They could climb up over that wall and shoot you right in the head. And I have done that personally to people, so beware. Next part of our gig, hit your uh, number, bring up your blueprint, hit number four again, right click. Floor plan, we're gonna put a ceiling up and the ceiling of your upstairs floor, or sorry, the ceiling of downstairs is actually the floor of upstairs. So think of it as a floor. There is no ceiling, it's just a floor. So hit floor plan and put it up there. If you see this look, down below. See how that's got a pink line across the top? It's actually on the outside of the wall. We don't want that right now, but some of your designs will. Lift up and it comes inside. This right here, if I beat those all in, will be the most basic of shelters. It's actually on the out. Now, if I was intelligent, and generally am, this is, I know the next step of what everybody's gonna wanna do is to build another floor up. If you're gonna do that, what I suggest, first of all, I'll get rid of this frame. You can use stairs. If you want stairs, bring up your blueprint, right click and click stairs. Now, stairs are a pain in the butt to put down. Sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. Stairs in the corner tend to work a lot and they'll go up just like that really easy. And you beat that 10 times and it'll allow you to climb up there and you know, you'll have all this space down here for it. And I actually I kinda like that. So we're gonna do that one. There, now we have stairs. And we have our first building simple simple little building this will not protect you from anything it's just the beginning so what you're going to want to do now very next move we've already made this low grade fuel we need to make a furnace because i hear somebody whacking on an animal and if he comes close we're running away again so we're going to create a furnace and while we're making that furnace we're going to put up some more walls i only use walls do not use windows oh crap okay now that i put walls up most of the time, they won't click. Sometimes they will, but usually they won't. So that one doesn't want to click. If it doesn't click, what you have to do is put the wall as close to you as you can and back up. I have no idea why that's happening. Oh, there we go. Back up to the very edge of the wall till it jumps like that. See how that jumped? Forward, jumps back. Click, because you're standing on the outside edge of the wall. That's what's happening. Usually, if you're down on the stairs, it'll work quite well. So, oh, that one worked. No. Get up here. And sometimes where you click, didn't work a minute ago, it works again. So back up until it jumps. There you go. Back up until it jumps. Click it and over here, back up. This whole time we're exposed, we're in the open. I hate that. It's killing me. So I gotta use some blocks first. Also, not downstairs, won't actually hit the stairs, we'll the angle. Most you see the line That's not what you're Okay, now, I need my fur. Bring my furnace. We've been very lucky so far. That guy didn't kill us, and, uh, Nobody's come and raided us yet, so um, we're gonna get this furnace going. Now, here's my trick. I take firewood, and I put, let's say, a thousand in there. Grab your metal ore, make sure you use your slider all the way to the top till the number stops moving. Put it in the first slot. Now, they fixed this because it never used to work, but this is awesome. Right-click, split. Boom, splits them into two. Right-click, split. Hey, how's it going? I'm making a YouTube video showing the noobs how to run in Rust. That sounds interesting. Yeah, I'm having fun. Uh, actually, your voice is going to be in it, too, because you're talking, so. That's cool. Just wanted to warn you in case you were going to get all ghetto on me. Okay, so right-click, split again, and we have 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, and 3, 3, 3. It's perfect. This is the fastest way you can make metal fragments, okay? Yeah, I think my voice is pretty uh, cool for holding a speech during your uh, video. Actually, it's a good voice. So now we need to uh, right click the furnace, or no, uh, left, or sorry, press E on the furnace, hit ignite the furnace. 
Send they me may. a link when you're done. <laughs> Cert certainly. So when you open the furnace, you're going to see here that you got charcoal. We need to right click, drop the charcoal, and do that every time you see charcoal until a metal fragment appears. Now we have a metal fragment. That means this isn't going to make any charcoal. It's just going to turn all this metal into metal fragments. For now, that's the fastest way we can make it. Hey, Dave. <laughs> okay, so there's my lesson. Anyways, uh, I use my TeamSpeak a lot. Make sure you have TeamSpeak installed. It's free. Um, and find a good community of people you like playing with. All right, so when you want to get some metal fragments, go into your furnace, and you see it here like this. What I do is it doesn't matter when you slide it up and down because the furnace is currently lit. You can't take stuff out of it easily. But there's one way you can do it. Right-click, and once you do right-click, wait a second for it to make a new piece of metal, and then hit drop, and it will drop the metal on the ground. Usually it'll bring up charcoal again after, but oh, we were lucky we got metal, but you remember that one. So then it puts the metal right there. Grab that metal. So now we have metal, and we have enough metal to make a lock. Most important tool in the game so far. We're really lucky someone hasn't come through here and killed us. Doing well, doing really well. I don't want to light a campfire yet, because there's a weird lighting thing that happens with campfires, and it throws the light all around inside, but it also throws it outside, so your house will light up like a Christmas tree, kind of like inviting everyone from the wilderness to come and try and break into your house. So that's another reason when you're done building your house, uh, if you're out in the open, you can build walls and give them give them a bit of space, but then build some really tall wooden walls. Doesn't matter if they're just made of wood, that's fine, because they're not to keep people out there to keep people from seeing your campfires. And the more you play, and the more you lose, and the more people break into your houses, the more you understand all the little details about it. So there's our lock, that's coming. And you'll hear my accent, I'm Canadian, and you'll hear me say things like, that's what it's all about. And uh, for all you Americans, I get a good chuckle and giggle out of that one. But uh, while I'm out in my canoe, out in a boot, I have a good time thinking about how great my country is. So, ha ha. Here we go. You can probably hear that airplane. Uh, I believe they give airdrops every once in a while. And if at some point, I'm probably going to run and look for one. I've never tried. But I know that the guys that I game with um, tend to love running after airdrops because they love running after the people that are going after the airdrops. And they get more stuff by killing the people chasing the airdrops than they do from the airdrops. Makes sense, huh? Okay, so I got my lock in hand. Click six. That gives us this funny little player to do something. Click the left mouse button and it puts a lock on the door. Because it's night, that looks dark, but it's actually green because it's unlocked. So now we have to have at least 100 wood in our inventory, which we have, and we're going to click E to create a key. And once we have a key, we can lock the lock. So while that's locking, we're going to switch to our hammer, and we're going to start upgrading everything. In order to upgrade, and you have to upgrade everything, you just hit it with a hammer. So let's start on this foundation. Okay, so on the right side, see where it says wooden door key? You'll notice every time I hit this, or every second or fifth time, it uses some material and it shows us what we're using. See, minus two, minus three stones. Now that's based on what I'm using right now. That plane must be right over our head. So when you're using up wood and it's at level one, you'll use wood. When it gets to the stone level, it'll start using up stones and then it'll get to the metal level. So you've got levels one through six, and when you're done using the metal and putting into it, you then have a level six item which takes anywhere between an hour to two hours to break down. So I'm gonna go ahead and upgrade as much of this as I can, and I'm gonna probably cut out all the upgrading in the editing session after, and I'll just cut back into it being done, unless something exciting happens in between. Okay, now our key's done, so we now have a new menu, it says lock. Push E, gives us this, you can create another key, so you have a duplicate, or lock the door. Now it's locked, you get a red square, and that lock is locked, and no one can open that door, but right now it's a very low level, so they can break it down easily. So I'm going to finish this, and the other thing that's really important to do, to unlock, you just push E, so you lock, and E to unlock. Very, very important to upgrade those steps. If you upgrade those steps, nobody can uh, can actually build in front of your door. On the of the door. Special note here, these steps change texture according to what level they're at. So you'll see these are stone, and when we pass the next level, they'll turn into metal. That means these steps have now reached level 5. The last step is level 6, and when I've got that done, I'll cut back into the video. Okay, so there, they're done. That's a level six stair. 
With that done, I'm gonna move into here and lock this door and it probably won't come out until I'm done upgrading. So, here we go. Okay, look back. I stopped mid, uh, mid building here because I wanted to show you something. This is a level one wall. We can go through this so fast it'll make your head spin. Okay, watch this. I don't know if you can hear me or not. I have my headset up there. More than likely you could. So that's a level one wall. You saw how fast I went through that. As soon as it looks like that, you can walk through it. See that? Two. If you see a wall like that, someone's already broken it down. Okay? But you can also fix it. Just grab your hammer. As soon as it turns into logs, that's a level one wall. Level two wall. Okay? That takes a little longer. This is a level three wall. Okay? Wood. Wood. Stone. That takes a little longer. That's a level three wall. This is a level four wall. See the shiny rocks? Level four wall takes a little bit longer. If I see this wall or this wall, I'll take about five minutes to break into your house, maybe three, with a, just a straight up iron hatchet, not a stone hatchet, but an iron hatchet. Take three to five minutes, beat those walls right down. Take one of them down, bust into your house. This is a level, what, is, what do I got here? One, two, three, four. This one's level five. This is the first level of metal. Significantly harder to break down, but not impossible. This is a level six. This is what you want to get everything to. So once you get to a level five, which is this one, we just keep beating it. On the right, it takes away metal fragments. A lot of people use an elastic over the mouse. I use a piece of tape. I put my mouse down. Go get a coffee or whatever, you know, something to eat, get my lunch, and I'll come back and one will be done every time. I hate to walk away from my character, but once he's safe inside, when you're doing your construction, it's better. So if you keep watching, do 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 boring metal fragments. Uh, it's nine or ten. I'm just I haven't even bothered to count the exact number, but when that many metal fragments go, see how there's dust coming off of this wall? That dust will stop when it turns to level six to be a little bit of dust. But see how that there, now it's a level six. Get all walls, all foundation, the doors, the roof, any floors. Everything has to be level six. If you want a safe base, the stairs outside, level six. Everything level six. I couldn't drill this into your head enough. I know people are impatient, but if you want a safe, you use as flat a foundation as you can so that your walls are as close to the ground as possible. So these are so low that even if somebody broke the foundation underneath, they can't crawl under the wall, which means they actually have to break the wall to come in. That's a good thing. It's a big bonus. Most people don't do that. And then by putting the stairs all around your foundation, people can't build up against your house. They can build on your house after the first level. They can attach on the outside edge, but they can't build anything right beside your wall. So they can't put a, a wall in front of your doorway. They can't put a ladder in front of your doorway. They're a ladder that makes it easy for them to climb up on anything. And really, I'm going to go outside and put ladder or steps like that all around on this rock everywhere I can, and that will stop anyone from building on my rock so they can climb up on my building. But it doesn't stop them from building on the next rock over, which will happen in suit. Right. So you've seen this going up to the next, and uh, I'm just going to create else for you more after. I just noticed this. It's a bit of a I'm in third person. I can see my little butt cheeks there. But when I hit F3 to switch back, look at my arms. They're all messed up. If that happens to you, the way to fix it is to actually put your weapon away, or your hammer in this case, the tool, and take it back out. So I'll push five twice, and it brings my arms back to normal. Just a glitch I thought you should know and how to fix. And another lesson. Hit that guy with the gun. He's. If I use my sonar hearing I could tell that he's over there I wouldn't even know he's over there if it wasn't for the fact he's shooting off that gun he's probably shooting animals or chasing some person around whatever he's doing you, sh you gotta learn to be discreet so if you have a gun use it for shooting people if you have to uh, if you're killing animals use a bow and arrow or use your spear uh, use your gun if you if you don't mind everybody knowing where you're at. But if you're out running through the field, having fun shooting animals, go nuts. But if you're around your base or your home, wherever you stay, you probably shouldn't use a really loud gun. Because after I'm done building this base, I'm probably going to go down and try and hunt him out and see if I can sneak up on him and shoot him and take his guns. You know? Yeah. So I'm going to finish up these walls, and I'll be back in a minute. As you can see, we're getting there. we got six, 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 six five no four six yeah we're almost done we're getting there so be back in a minute okay here's a good one for you i'm working on this wall and i ran out of metal fragments watch the left side of the screen need one metal fragments okay well thank goodness my server was working and it was making me metal fragments so i got 900 and some metal fragments if i put more wood into it 
and I grab when I got two something there. We'll grab two hundred something. Leave a little behind. There we go. Ignite the furnace. Gives me a little light in my cabin. See my stalker cabin here. Little crazy man in the woods cabin. But uh, gives me the fragments I need. So, all right. Let's finish up these walls while listening to that psycho with the gun. And he's gonna get it when I build a gun. Yeah. All right. I'm gonna sit here and plot my revenge like the crazy naked guy in the cabin in the woods. But fire light while I upgrade my walls. And I'll be right back. Okay. There, we have upgraded all of downstairs to level six. Our foundations are nice and low. This is a pretty safe main floor. However, upstairs, remember I had the stairs there? I put those stairs to show you how to put stairs up, but stairs are a pain in the butt and they take up too much room for me. Um, I found a better way. Someone else showed me this. I think it's much better. So instead of using stairs, I'll show you what I do. I grab my foundation plan. I put up a wall. Use my brain here. Wall plan. Should be right there, I think. Is that the right? Yep. So that gives me a separation like that. Take my hammer. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine. Done. Then I go back to my wall plan, right click, put in a railing plan, and pull it towards you a little till it pops out. And boom, click. That gives you a railing that you can jump on right up against that. Now you can see, I still have all the same room. It's a little separated. I guess I'll put another furnace in there with it. And I got this room, but I can jump up. And if I hold down shift, push forward and jump again, I'm on the next floor. And that gives me this whole floor. The thing I really like about this version is if I want to, I could get rid of that railing. I don't even think I'd have to. I could put in a doorway plan right there. Yeah, if I chop out that railing, I can put in a doorway plan there. If I need to segregate off and kind of survive and stop the bleeding in case someone broke into the roof or something, I can do that. Take out that railing, put in that, and then that gives me this new thing. So my next step is going to be to upgrade the ceiling and the wall. So I'm going to do that now, and I'll be back in a moment. All right, YouTubers, uh, we're back. I've got level five, level six, level five, level five, level five, level six, level one, level two. I'm working on it here. So, uh, but uh, coming back in because here's what I want to show you. You see on my bar on the right over here, right down here it says dehydration. That means I'm running out of water in my body. Um, important thing to know: there is no f drink in this game. So um, all you can do is eat the meat. So uh, we grab a fireplace, throw down or a campfire, enter a campfire, hit open. Campfire comes with 50 wood in it, but it takes 60 to cook anything. So grab 10 more. Yeah, it's not always easy, but oh, there's 10. And drop it on there. Now I got 60 there. I can cook three pieces of meat at a time. If I put two, I'll get charcoal, but I don't need the charcoal. So put three. Excuse me. And the fire. Important note. Don't stand too close to the fire. If you do, you'll take damage, and I'm going to step in the fire to show you. Ow, 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 ow. See, I burned myself. So I got to burn my health down to 84, but that's cooking now. Now that light, this is what I was telling you earlier. Campfires throw off a lot of light, so unlock that. Let's go outside. Shut the door. Now I'll show you. Look at this. Look at the amount of light coming off our cabin right now. If we run up here, and some other guy in the woods. Oh, look, there's light shining over there. If we had put up walls fur, far enough out so it covers that circle of light, we would be okay. That's nice. You can't let us approach. There's that circle of light. And this is going to keep them. We'll get level 60s after, but I'll do that you know, later. i got to sum up this video quick because i got to head to work. But as far as an introductory video, I hope this is good. I hope you like it. hope it shows you the basics. Make sure you lock your door. Um, that campfire's... Oh, too close. Press E. Open the fire. Where am I at? i got nine wood still burning. When that's done burning, seven, six. That will give me three pieces of cooked meat. Usually it's 60. It should be 60. Sometimes it takes one or two more. I don't know why it's... Not exact, but oof, they are perfect. So to eat that, you don't even have to pick it up. You just right-click, eat wolf meat. See that? My dehydration's gone because it, the wolf meat gives you some moisture back. It also gives you back this food bar. So this is food bar, moisture, hydration, and health bar. It also gives you health, so it's like a little health pack. Eating a bunch will just give you more health and more hydration, which helps you when you're doing stuff, okay? Um, and that is your lesson. When you've got this all upgraded, I'm going to throw in, let me see if I got... I'm all out of wood, so I'm just going to throw some down here. No, i got to use the wood up here on this wall. Jump up here. When you have your roof all finished, which I don't right now, but when you do, your wall's all finished, your wall's finished, your door finished, and your foundation all finished, and then the stairs around your foundation finished, then you have a reasonably safe place. You just want to lay down a sleeping bag, and then you can start raiding. Now here's my next note for you. I need 100 wood to make a copy of my key. That's why it says lock and it doesn't say make a new key. So 
what I suggest in this case, you want to take at least one key and put it somewhere where you can hide it. I don't have enough wood to do anything. I got to get more wood. But you want to have one key in your house, hidden in your house. So you put it in a box or in a lantern or something like that. And you want to take one key and put it in a box or in a lantern hidden in a bush nearby. That way, you can get in, you can get out. And if somebody kills you, you spawn in your house, they don't have your key. Never carry your key on you when you're running around outside unless you're going to put it away right now. So if I go out that door, I'm going to run, put the key in a bush somewhere, hide it, and then go do what I'm going to do. Go collect firewood, go hunting, go do whatever. And that will save you so many headaches and so much time. And, uh... I hope this has been a good little video for you. I hope you enjoyed it. There's the moon setting on our beautiful little two by two, two story, and uh, the beautiful view in um, in Rust. Enjoy the scenery, enjoy the gameplay, meet the people, don't be afraid to run, don't be afraid to die. Have a great experience and try to help others have a good experience too. This is Big Bad Dad, also known as Diesel or Dave Sullivan. Thank you for watching my video.